Hey there. Today, I'll be showing you some tips on completing the Monarch's Journey Challenge for Llewellyn the Great of Gwynedd. As usual, I'll only be using the DLCs that have been made available for free, those being The Old Gods, Sword of Islam, and Sons of Abraham. The last two aren't available for free anymore, but you can still get The Old Gods for free by following the link in the video description and signing up for the Crusader Kings 3 email newsletter. By signing up through this link, you'll also be helping me earn free stuff, so I do appreciate that if you choose to do so. Here's the rule set I'm using for this challenge, and as you'll notice, the cosmetic mods I have activated do not interfere with unlocking Monarch's Journey challenges. Links also in the description if you're interested in any of those mods. The challenges we have for Llewellyn today are as follows. First is Dragon's Fire. Completely control all of the counties on this list. This is an all-or-nothing challenge and can be completed as long as you're playing Llewellyn's Dynasty. Second is Princes of Wales. While being an independent King of Wales, have as many Duke-tier vassals of your dynasty as possible. Three for bronze, six for silver, and nine for gold. This can also be completed as long as you're playing Llewellyn's dynasty. Finally, Love Spoons. Marry as many of Llewellyn's children to English nobility as possible. Two for bronze, three for silver, and four for gold. This challenge must be completed while playing as Llewellyn. This is probably one of the easiest Monarch's Journey challenges just because of how completely overpowered Crusades and Papal interactions are. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, our priority as always is setting up a situation where we can complete the challenge that can only be done within our starting character's lifetime. In this case, that is Love Spoons. We need to have four kids and have them all be married to English nobility at the same time. Marry the youngest and most fertile wife available to you. If you're having difficulty with it, you can always invite some debutantes to tumble with for extras. For your married children to count toward the challenge, make sure that they're indeed marrying a character of English culture who is either a title holder or has a claim on a title. The four kids and their spouses need to all be alive at the same time for the challenge, and only full adult marriages count, not betrothals. So I recommend waiting for your four oldest children to all grow up to adulthood at the same time, so you can make sure they all get married off at once to qualifying spouses without worrying about anybody dying before someone else can get hitched. Besides those considerations, just keep Llewellyn himself healthy and avoid dangerous situations to make sure he lives to see four of his kids' wedding days. As for the rest of the challenge, basically we need land. A lot of it. Just having nine duke vassals underneath you is a tall order for a dynasty that only starts in control of a single duchy. You've probably also noticed that England is an enormous powerhouse at the start of this challenge and that they're right next door to you. Some guides may tell you that the best option is to swear fealty to England and take over from within. Even ignoring how disgusting it would be for a proud Welsh king to bend the knee so quickly to England, my guides strive for swift and brutal efficiency above all else, and while playing the game of sabotage and intrigue is fun, it's nowhere near as fast as just taking over the big red blob with a single war. Make no mistake, England is your greatest threat in this challenge, but it's also your greatest opportunity for growth. Step 1. Fertilize your dynasty. Just like you married Llewellyn to a wife who will give him lots of kids, you'll want to do the exact same thing for all of his family members. You've got three adult male cousins, two adult female cousins, and two underage male cousins who are all unmarried. For the guys, find them some young women with any combination of lustful and tier 2 or higher diplomacy or stewardship education. For the girls, invite a couple of lustful grey eminences to your court so you can force a matrilineal marriage with them. And don't let anybody who's related to you join a holy order or become a monk or a nun. You want to set up these marriages early so that there's a better chance your family members will produce sons for later. Step 2. Plot to kill Richard the Lionheart. Despite being a veteran crusader and masterful general, the King of England is hated by his vassals at the start of the challenge because he owns far too much land personally, so you'll have no problems at all creating a conspiracy to bring a quick end to his life. When he dies, the throne will pass to an underage child, which is exactly what we need. Step 3. While you're waiting for the assassination to fire, a crusade will be called. Pledge your troops to it, pick your already married uncle who isn't going to have any more kids to be your beneficiary, and build up your levies as much as possible, sending them out a couple months before the actual start date of the crusade to wherever the target location is. Who am I kidding? It'll be Egypt. It's always Egypt. Step 4. Ignore the siege warfare and land grabbing game that the AI is trying to play, and instead throw your troops into battles against the biggest Muslim stacks that you think you can beat. Crusade participation score is largely determined by participating in enormous bloody battles, and you want as much participation as possible. Your troops may take heavy losses. It doesn't matter. You may not be in the number one spot, it doesn't matter. You're in the crusade for two reasons, cash and Jesus points. The more blood you shed, the more participation rank you'll get, and the higher your paycheck will be. 
Step 5. After the Crusade, trade in your Jesus points with Holy Daddy to get an invasion CB on the Kingdom of England, which is currently being led by an unfit child. Now you've got a claim on the entire Kingdom of England and the enormous amount of land it holds in this start date. But how do you actually win? Well, killing Richard helps a lot, because his martial skill being so high makes him able to reinforce and lead his troops a lot better than whatever child inherits after him can. Step 6. Take England. So even with Richard off the throne, odds are you're still outnumbered 5 to 1 against England. But keep in mind that the English troop count includes the levies that they can pull from their entire kingdom, much of which is based on the European continent. These troops will take time to combine their strength with the English army on the island, so rather than facing their entire might at once, you can crush their island armies before they have time to form up, reducing their numbers and getting a head start on sieging down capitals before the mainland reinforcements arrive. The money you earn from your crusade participation will basically win this war for you. Buy enough mercenaries to make your levy armies at least match England's, and start taking county after county with your overwhelming numbers, stomping on any red troops that get too close to scatter them again and weaken England's ability to fight back with each battle you win. Step 7. Decide when to stop. This will depend on how much money you have after it's clear that you've won the war. Remember that the war you're waging is an invasion war. That means that on top of taking the kingdom, any county that you occupy at the end of the war is directly given to you, along with all the smaller holdings underneath it. Princes of Wales becomes a lot easier to complete if you end this war with a bunch of counties in your personal domain, so if your budget allows you to keep up the mercenaries, you can only benefit from taking as many counties as possible before enforcing demands. Just make sure to have some gold left over, you'll need it to create titles after the war. Step 8. Get your new realm in order. If you create the Kingdom of Wales, you should be able to successfully offer to vassalize Doibarth, a duchy that was previously your tributary, and now contains the last counties you need under your control to complete the Dragon's Fire Challenge. Plus, you need to be King of Wales for the last challenge. Let's break down what you actually need to complete Princes of Wales. You must hold the Kingdom of Wales and be an independent ruler with no liege above you. You must be of Welsh culture. You must have nine Duke vassals directly underneath you who are of your dynasty. These Dukes must all be male, even if you have equal rights for women in your game. They must all be of Welsh culture, and they must all be alive and ruling their respective lands at the same time. Now that you know this, go into your dynasty tree and see if you can find nine living male relatives. This is why we married off all our dynasty members at the very start of the game, to increase the chances that some of them will have given birth to a son by the time we got to this point. If you can find nine men, even if they're newborn infants, you can probably complete the challenge right now. Give each of your nine chosen Princes of Wales a single county each, then create any nine duchies from the title creation alert. Give one of these duchies to each of your princes. Don't worry if the de jure lands of these duchies are nowhere near the counties that you've given to your princes. All that matters is that they've been given a county so that they can be given a duchy and be raised up to duke tier. If you've selected your princes correctly, unpause to allow a day to pass in-game and Princes of Wales should be complete. If you don't have nine valid princes ready as soon as the war for England ends, set up as many princes as you can and wait for your dynasty to produce more boys. If you need to, revoke counties from your other vassals to give to your family members. Their opinions of you don't matter because your monarch's journey is complete as soon as you've finished all three challenges. I hope this guide was helpful to you. Obligatory begging for likes and comments, etc, etc. See you next time.